Welcome back everyone. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and if you watch the SwiftUI Bootcamp, you might be wondering why we are covering the scroll view reader, because we already covered scroll views. Isn't it the same thing? But it is not. Unfortunately, when we add a very basic scroll view to our application, we can scroll manually up and down, but we cannot automatically scroll to the bottom or scroll to the middle or scroll anywhere automatically in that scroll view. So in this video, we're gonna look at adding the scroll view reader to our application so that we can add features to automatically scroll to the bottom of our scroll view or to any certain point in our scroll view that we want to. The scroll view reader is a very, very handy tool to have in your toolkit. To give you an example of when this might be used is in a chat application. Uh, when you have all of your chat messages in a scroll view, you probably wanna start that screen at the bottom of the chat because the bottom of the chat is usually the most recent text. Whereas if we didn't scroll to the bottom, it would start at the top. That would be the older conversation and that wouldn't be a good user experience. So the scroll view reader is actually pretty easy to implement. I'm gonna walk you guys through it now. Let's go take a look. I'm back in our Xcode project and let's right click the navigator as we always do, create a new file for this video. It's gonna be a Swift UI view. And let's call this scroll view reader bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Click resume on the canvas once you're inside. Let's get ready to get coding. And let's start out with a very simple scroll view, of course. Scroll view, open the brackets, and in the scroll view, I'm gonna add a for each. Open the parentheses. We're gonna use the data with a range completion here. And we're gonna do for zero, to dot dot less than maybe 50. Hit enter and we're going to get rid of this nonsense and this will be the index that we're looping on. Now in the SwiftUI bootcamp, I already did a video on how scroll views work and a video on how for each loop works. So if you're not familiar with this, I'd recommend going to watch those videos and coming on back. Uh, but in this for each loop, we're gonna loop 50 times and we're going to create a text and the text is going to say this is item number and then backslash open and close parentheses index so this will have the index now let's make this look a little bit better let's give this a dot font of headline let's give it a dot frame with a height of maybe 200 Let's give it a dot frame with a max width of infinity. Let's give it a, a background of color dot white. Let's give it a corner radius of 10. And let's add some padding around the entire thing. Let's also, before we add the padding, let's add a shadow of a radius of 10. And we should now get these nice cool little cards on our screen. If I click resume on the canvas, we can now scroll up and down through all these items. We can see item number 10, 12, 13, all the way down to item number 49, which is the 50th card. Because and that's the and that's because the first card is number zero, not number one, and that's just the index. All right. Now in this video, we're looking at the scroll view reader. And basically we use the scroll view reader to scroll to a certain place in the scroll view. Because right now this is great, but what if I wanted when this screen loaded, I wanted it to start at the bottom. So I wanted it to be scrolled down to number 49 or any number really. We can't tell it where to scroll without a scroll view reader. So it's pretty simple. All we have to do is wrap all of the content in a reader. So before this for each, I'll add a scroll view reader, open the parentheses, and then we have content. And then in our content, we can add the placeholder. Now, just like a lot of things with UI, I don't like this extra uh, content closure here. So I'm just going to instead type scroll view reader, open the brackets and type proxy in, press enter. Uh, so this section of code and this section of code are basically the same thing, just without this word content. So I'm just going to delete this and we're going to use this proxy. I'm going to put the for each statement inside the scroll view reader. 
All right, so now we have access to this proxy, and this, and this proxy is basically reading the size of the scroll view, so it knows where each of these items are. Now to scroll, we just need to call a function on this proxy. So at the top here, before we loop, let's add a uh, button. Open the parentheses. I'm gonna use the string protocol and action. The title will say, click here to go to number 49 press enter on the action and we're going to call proxy dot scroll and I noticed that the auto completion doesn't work here and I think it's because it's trying to load all of these 50 items while auto completing so I'm just going to comment this out real quick and now start typing in proxy dot scroll and we can see our two options one is just scroll to the ID and the other one is scrolling to an ID with an anchor point so we're going to use the anchor point and then the ID is basically going to be what index we want to scroll to. So for starters, let's put number 49. And then anchor is where we want it to be on our screen. So for now, let's just leave this. For now, we'll just leave this as nil. Let's uncomment this out. And now if we open our app and we try to click it, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because this proxy does not know where number 49 is. Now we're looping 50 times, but we need to explicitly tell it where each item is. So we do that by giving the item a dot ID. And the ID will just be the index. So now the proxy knows that this item number 49 is the one with the index of 49. So if we click it again, it'll now scroll us down to item number 49. Now let's change this to item number maybe 30. I'll change this to 30 as well. And then we'll play with the anchor point. So let's set it equal to top. I'll restart this. And when I go to number 30 now, the number 30 is at the top. If I had set it to center, we did it again. 30 is right in the center. So this is very handy. And of course, we can do the bottom. And it goes to the bottom. And now you're probably noticing that it's jumping to number 30. It's not scrolling like it naturally would. And we can easily make it scroll by adding some animation. So we'll call with animation dot uh, maybe spring, open the brackets, put the proxy dot scroll to inside the animation, and let's change it back to center. And now when we do it, it should actually animate uh, down to number 30. Let's see. We had that nice scroll animation. And that looks much better to me. I like that better where it scrolls when you click it. So that's pretty much the gist of the scroll view reader. Uh, but let's take this one step further because a lot of times you're not going to have this button inside of the scroll view reader, right? Because right now we have access to this proxy because we're inside this scroll view reader. But in many apps, a lot of cases, the button is going to be outside the scroll view. So let's update for that now. All right, so we're going to take the scroll view and we're going to put it into a VStack. So I'm going to hold the command button, click on scroll view, embed in VStack. And at the top of the VStack, outside the scroll view, we're going to add a text field. Open the parentheses. We're going to use the string protocol and binding approach. The title will be enter a number here, dot, dot, dot. And then, of course, the text field, we need to bind it to a string. So at the top, we'll do at state var text field text of type string equals blank string. We'll bind it with the money sign text field text. Let's click try again to get that text field on the text. And then let's add a little bit of formatting. Let's give it a frame with a height of 55. Let's give it a border with a color dot gray. Let's give it some padding of horizontal. I'm not trying to make this look good. I just want to do it so that we can see it. And the last thing on this text field, we're going to add a dot keyboard type, and we're going to use the dot number pad. This way, if someone opens this on our app, it's only going to allow them to enter numbers into the text field because we want to enter in a number here on what number we want to go to, just for this example, at least. So this is number. And then we're going to take our button from down here. So I'm just going to cut this button and I'm going to paste it up here. 
And instead of click here to go to number 30, let's just make this say scroll now. And now we have the issue, of course, that we do not have access to this proxy when we're outside the scroll view reader. So what we're going to do is create a variable at the top that will reference where we want to scroll to. So we'll say at state var um, scroll to index of type int and we'll set it equal to zero. And now when we click this button, we want to get the current number that's in the text field and then add it to the scroll, scroll to index. And we're going to say let index equals text field text. Now we need this to be a number, even though it's a string, we need it to be an integer. So right now this is just a string, but let's make it an integer by just wrapping it with the int open and close parentheses. And if I hold the option button and click on the index, we can see that it is an optional integer because there is a theoretical chance that it tries to unwrap this string into an integer and it can't. And if it can't, this would be nil. So we just want to make sure that this is actually valid. So we're going to use an if let statement, open the brackets. And then if we do get this index, we're going to set the scroll to index equal to the index. And we can get rid of this for a second. So now we're setting our scroll to index. But of course, we need to tell the scroll view reader to actually scroll when this index is changed. And there's a handy modifier that we can use. So on the on the bottom of this for each, I'm going to add dot on change. And this adds a modifier for the view that fires when a specific value changes. So click enter here. And what value are we watching the change of? And that's going to be this scroll to index at the top. So down here, we're changing it. Then this is the variable that is changing. So this will be the scroll to index. And then we can perform, and this is the new value of the scroll view index. So we're going to use this value to call the proxy. So we're going to say proxy dot scroll to, and we'll add in the value and the anchor. We'll just put as nil for now. All right. So now, anytime the scroll to index changes, this will automatically scroll the proxy to that new value. Let's click try again one more time. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the code a little better. And let's see if it works. And right now there's nothing in here. So if I click scroll now, it's not going to do anything. But if I put in a number, maybe 32, scroll now, it's on 32. And actually, I want it to be animated. So let's add some with animation dot spring, open brackets, and then put the proxy dot scroll inside. Let's do it again, maybe number 13, scroll now, we go to number 13. Let's set the anchor at the top because that looks a little more natural. Let's go to number 40, scrolling to number 40, 45, down to 45, go back to number 30. And now you guys can see how the scroll view reader works. And again, if we try to add in something here that is not a number, so just letters here, and we try to scroll, this if flood statement will fail, so it will not have a crash, it just won't scroll, which is perfect. And if we add a number that's outside of our range, like 4,000, it's not going to scroll because there is no item with the ID of 4,000. So the scroll view reader is smart and also safe, which is really helpful. Now in your actual app, you probably won't have this for each of zero to 50. Instead, you'll be looping on some actual uh, data. So all you would need to do is set the ID equal to the index of each item inside your data set. And I would say the most common uh, use case for the scroll view reader is to be able to scroll to the bottom. Because like in a text, in a chat app, uh, when that chat opens, you want it to be at the bottom. You don't want it to be at the start of the conversation. You want to be at the most recent part of the conversation. So in that case, you would just set the scroll view to the last, to the index of the last item in your data array. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. You're now experts on the scroll view reader. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.